Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. We're given that xy plus xz plus yz is equal to zero, and we're supposed to evaluate x plus y divided by z plus x plus z divided by y plus y plus z divided by x. So our goal is to find a numerical value for the second expression, given that the first expression equals zero. Make sense? Okay. There's a couple different ways to approach this problem, and let's talk about those. So first, I wanna go ahead and tell you something that may not always work and that may not be the ideal method, but I'm still gonna talk about it. So whenever you have a problem like this, you should be able to replace x, y, z with certain values such that the first criteria is, or criterion, is satisfied. And then, if those values work with the first equation, then, substitute those into the second to get the numerical value you're looking for. Does that make sense? For example, what kind of x, y, z values will satisfy the first equation? First of all, there are three variables. So there would be more than one triple, right? That would satisfy, for example. And by the way, uh, we need to make sure that x, y, z are never zero, okay? Because that would make our second expression undefined. So besides zero, you can pretty much use anything. So let's say x and y are both 1. Is that possible? x equals 1 and y equals 1. So I'm not going to pick values for x, y, z because they have to satisfy the equation, but at least I can pick 2 or even 1 and then go find the other ones. For example, if x and y are both 1, we can go ahead and plug it in. That gives us 1 plus z plus z equals 0. And this gives us a not so nice value, but it's okay. 2z equals negative 1, z equals negative 1 half. Now, so we got these values and they satisfy the first equation. So what happens if you plug those into the second one? Let's try. x plus y is 1 plus 1 divided by z, which is negative 1 half. And then x plus z is 1 minus 1 half divided by y, which is 1. And then y plus z is 1 minus 1 half divided by 1 again. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is a 2 divided by negative 1 half. That will be a negative 4, right? This would be 1 half divided by 1. That will be 1 half. Same thing here. 1 half, 1 half plus 1 half is 1. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Okay, looks like uh, these values give me negative 3. But here's the thing. Is it always going to be a constant? Well, ideally it should be. So can we try a different triple of numbers or triplet of numbers, whatever. So I could probably say, hey, let x be 2 and y be 1. And then from here, find the z value. Let's go ahead and find it. If x, and, x is 2, by the way, I got to remember, so I don't have to scroll back and forth. This is 0. Great. And then now if with x equals 2 and y equals 1, we get 2 plus 2z plus z equals 0. From here, 3z is negative 2 z is negative two thirds. So unfortunately, one of the values, as far as I know, always have to be a fraction. And that makes substitution a little harder, but it's not too bad. And you can go ahead and test these out. I'm not gonna do it for you uh, because I need to talk about a couple different things here, but you can go ahead and test it out and see if you're gonna be able to get. Of course, this is by no means a proof, but if it's a multiple choice question, you know, uh, be my guest. Uh, you're more than welcome to try this out. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And the second method is basically going to focus on trying to solve this algebraically. What does that mean? We know that xy plus xz plus yz is equal to zero, right? And we're trying to apply it to this sum here. x plus y over z plus x plus z over y plus y plus z over x. Okay, so that's the numerical value we're trying to find. Can we do something by making a common denominator? Probably. Uh, we should multiply this by xy. So it's going to be xy times x plus y, and then xz times x plus z, and then yz times y plus z. And that's all divided by x, y, and z. So we're supposed to find the numerical value, but the only thing we know is this one. How can we use that information? We could probably do this. Set the x plus y plus z equal to something. How about s for sum? 
and then square both sides, right? Uh, if you square both sides, that's gonna give us something interesting, like this, maybe use a different color, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, plus two times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. We know that this is s squared, but also this is equal to zero. It's given, right? That's given in the problem. So now we get something interesting that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is s squared, which is x plus y plus z squared. Whether this is gonna help or not, I, I'm not sure, but I just, I was just thinking, maybe we can do this. Replace x plus y with s minus z, replace this with x mi s minus y, and this with s minus x. Let's see what that's gonna give us. We also know this, so we might be able to use it later. Let me go ahead and clear this area a little bit so we can use it, okay? Let's see, when we distribute this, we're gonna get x, y, s, x, z, s. So take the x, s out, we're gonna get x, y plus x, z plus y, z. And then uh, we're gonna multiply negative z by x, y, that's gonna give us negative x, y, z, negative x, y, z, negative x, y, z. So we're gonna get that three times. And that'll be divided by x, y, z. Nice. You know what? I didn't even know this was gonna work. I just wanted to test it out because I have another method, okay, in store that I'm gonna share with you. But it looks like it's gonna work. You know how? Look at this. What is x, y plus x, z plus y, z? It's zero. Boom. That's gone. So we end up with negative three x, y, z divided by x, y, z. So that'll give us negative three. Of course, x, y, z should be different from zero. And I didn't even use this one, right? So I don't really need it. Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method because I think that's also very cool, but you're gonna get to decide which method do you like the best, okay? So what do we have? x, y plus x, z plus y, z is equal to zero, and we're supposed to evaluate x plus y over z plus x plus z over y, and y plus z divided by x numerically. We already know the answer, but let's just go ahead and test it out for fun. What should this give us? And how do we go about it, right? So here's what I'm gonna show you. We can actually go ahead and do something really fun. <laughs> Take this expression and divide by x, y, z. We know that x, y, z are never zero, so their product is not gonna be zero either. But I'm gonna go ahead and divide this by x, y, z, which is non-zero, right? And of course, the numerator is zero, that's gonna be zero. Zero divided by non-zero, right? All good. Now, this is really cool because if you split it up, like this will give us one over z, this will give us one over y, and this will give us one over x, right? So we're gonna get one over x plus one over y plus one over z. By the way, that color is kinda hard to see. Let me go back to this. 1 over x plus 1 over y plus, this is probably the easiest to see, right? So something interesting comes up from the equation we were given. There's some of the reciprocals of these expressions is zero. How does that help? Here's how it, you can use it. Take the second expression and also split it up. Why? Because you'll see in a little bit. We can go ahead and write this as x over z plus y over z plus x over y plus z over y plus y over x plus z over y. Now here's the fun part. You can go ahead and pick the two terms that have the same numerator, like this one and this one, factor out an x, and you can write the rest as one over y plus one over z, and then you can take the y, this one, maybe I should use a different symbol, like shape, y times one over x plus one over z, and finally, this one and this one would be z times 1 over y, oops, wait a minute, they can't both be that, okay, so I messed up here, this is supposed to be z over x, right, and this would be 1 over x plus 1 over y, cool, so this is the expression I'm trying to evaluate, and guess what I can do, because I know that the sum of the reciprocals is zero, I can basically write the sum of the two as the opposite of the third one, makes sense, because their sum is zero, so this would be negative one over y, this would be negative one over z. From where? From here. If you isolate one over x, for example, or negative one over x, okay, fine, I'll do it this way. If you isolate this, one over y plus one over z, that will be negative one over x. You get the idea? Cool. 
Now we have the following, x times negative one over x is gonna be negative one, y times negative one over y, and z times negative one over z. They're all gonna cancel out, leaving us with negative one plus negative one plus negative one, which is negative three. One more time, the expression is negative three because it has a constant value, I already told you, right? You can test it out. Now let's go ahead and check if, uh, we can get something similar or the same result with Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve such a problem? A language model, whatever you call it, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, whatever. Wolfram Alpha, unfortunately, sucks at this. Can't do it, too bad. It just calls it indeterminate because it doesn't know what to do. Too bad, humans are smarter. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in the other video, until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.